we are gonna be talking about things I wish I knew before going to art school. I know, drama baby. Drama. For those of you new here, I currently major in art at Roski School of Art and Design at USC, and so that's what I'm gonna be talking about today, just my experience and the mess that my first semester was. Cause that shit was crazy, okay? Without further ado, let's get into the video. Now when I was in high school, I watched a ton of videos like these, and so I don't want to give like super basic information that everyone talks about, but I am going to be talking about things that other people have said. For example, number one, art supplies are expensive as fuck. Now we know this, we've been new, right? Everyone says, oh my god, art supplies are so expensive. And like, you know it in your brain, but then when you actually get to the register at Blick and you have to say, oh yes, I'm gonna buy these three tubes of oil paint and I'm gonna buy an 18 by 24 inch canvas. And then your total comes out to literally like 70 bucks for one trip. You're like, what the fuck? Oh, what the fuck? And I consider myself lucky because I actually live in California, so I was able to drive down most of my art supplies. But people from the East Coast cannot just like fly over with tubes of paint from home. They have to repurchase everything, and that would have been a mess. And so not even taking that into consideration, I spent like over $500 on art supplies this semester, and I consider that almost lucky. Yeah. Can you imagine $500 for art supplies for one semester? Mm -hmm. Babe, make it make sense. Make it make sense. Also, it's not even like I go to a public school. Like, this is literally a private institution that I already pay money for. So, like, can you please just give me, like, a crayon or two? Mm -hmm. Something. Something. The second thing is the amount of time that goes into each project. Not only are you taking drawing classes where you have to draw the same thing over and over again at home, doing figure studies, doing still lives, etc., but you also have to do completed pieces, which could take up to 20 to 40 hours for just one project in other classes. My puffer jacket took literally 40 hours to complete, and that was just for one project. I also spent over 25 hours for another project that I got an A minus on. Babe, an A minus. Again, the time management was huge and you have to be your own project manager. I found it was really great to keep a schedule of physical post-it notes. That's just how my brain works. I like to write everything out, lay it out in like a calendar format, and then just stick it on my wall and then peel back the post-it notes once I'm done with them. And that's because I like something more tangible. I know, I'm like that superficial art person that's like, oh my god, I like the real things. I like, I don't like online things. I like things in the real world. Yeah, that's not really me either. I'm on social media constantly. So it just hurts my brain to be on the screen even more than I have to. So I just like to plan things out on my post-it notes and I find that super helpful. Along with that time management piece, a lot of my professors didn't warn us when we had extra assignments. Like they just gave me the syllabus and I had to follow it. They weren't like, oh my god, we have this assignment due next week, like make sure you do it. There is no like hand holding in that aspect, so you really have to be on top of your ish if you want to get a good grade in class. Because sometimes you have essays that you forget to write and you have to write them at 10 p.m. when they're due at 12. The third thing I wish I'd known was how insecure I was about my art before I got to art school. I didn't realize I had that much like imposter syndrome and insecurity surrounding my own work um, until I saw other people's works and started comparing it to my own. And I just had like a breakdown multiple times being like, oh my god, like theirs is so good, like mine is so shit, like I don't know how I'm gonna compare to this person. And imposter syndrome is something that's really difficult to overcome, and I don't think I've overcome it at all yet. I've said this in previous videos as an example, but like the moment I got into art school, I immediately said, oh, I guess everyone just got it. Um, because I couldn't imagine myself actually getting in on my own merit. I just assumed that because they let me in, everyone just got in. I was diminishing my own accomplishments because I didn't feel deserving of it. And that's complete BS, y'all. If you're feeling the same way, just know, first of all, you're not alone. Me and you feel the same way. It is important to recognize that those are just feelings of imposter syndrome and you are worthy of everything that you have and you're deserving of it. I think that it's really important in your brain to make a distinction about entitlement and deserving something. Because when you work so hard and you put your all into a portfolio and you get in, you deserve that. And admissions and portfolio review group saw your work and said, this person would be great in our program. And even the things you create, you are deserving of the praise that you get from it. I feel like people mix deserving and entitlement because entitlement has a connotation of privilege, thinking in more absolutes of how you had to have gotten it over someone else. And I didn't realize that until kind of recently. And that's something I'm still trying to practice within my own mental space is thinking about how I am deserving of things, and that's completely different than me feeling like I'm entitled to these things. 
Moving on, just like an art piece cannot totally be perfect 100%, there's also no such thing as a 100% bad piece. First of all, art is inherently subjective and you can interpret it in different ways and different audiences may resonate with your work more than another audience. And two, if you're in critique session and you feel like your art is just bad compared to everyone else's, it's very easy to tear yourself down and be like, wow, this project sucks. It was a total waste of time. I don't know why I did this. Like, I hate myself. I'm gonna jump off a bridge. Like, all those thoughts that do occur, especially in critique. It's important to recognize the good parts of the piece. Let's say you improve your technique slightly or your process for this piece was much more different and you realize that this approach might not have worked out so you can try a different approach next time. Even if you have things that were unsuccessful in a piece, it will also help you improve to be more successful later on as you're able to kind of analyze what happened. Like girl, what the fuck happened in the process? that made it turn out this way. I had a professor who always said something good about an art piece. She did not tear into anyone. She was honest with people about techniques they could fix, shading places, adding value in certain places, etc. But she always found something nice to say about a piece. And I think that really helped me have a more positive outlook on my work and just a better mindset when self-critiquing. The last thing I wish I knew in art school was that you don't have to know who you are when you go into art school. People don't talk about this. I had this idea that everyone would be like balling out in different clothing, fashion icons everywhere. Everyone just knew themselves so well. And while there are people who are really in tune with their self-expression, you don't have to know who you are. And I was kind of hesitant going into that space because I'm like, I dress kind of basic. I'm kind of like, not that cool compared to everyone else. Everyone else seems like they have their shit together. Fashion-wise, art-wise, developing their self-concept, they know their identity, who they are, how to express it, how to communicate that to other people, how to communicate that in an art sphere. And I had this pressure coming in that I had to like change myself to be more artsy or to obtain that aesthetic of just communicating that I knew who I was as a person when it was complete bullshit. Complete bullshit. And that low-key gave me anxiety the whole way through. I just kept looking at myself in the mirror before going to art class and being like, wow, like you're not an art student. Like look at you, like you don't even know like who you are. Like what are you wearing? Like what are you doing? So I wanna let all of you guys know, not everyone has their shit figured out. Clearly I don't have my shit figured out. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And if you don't know who you are, that's totally fine. And so just know everyone is rooting for you and no one is trying to tear you down, even if it's basic. Why can't you be basic? Why can't we be basic? I don't understand why people are like, oh my god, like you have to be different this, you need to be unique that. Like, no. I am literally basic and I'm totally fine with being basic. I listen to Ariana Grande. I listen to Taylor Swift. I listen to Doja. I don't listen to like, I don't know, like a lot of a lot of like indie people and that's totally fine. Period. End of story. So those are some specific things that I wish I knew before going to art school. And now I'm going to answer more specific questions that you guys had on Instagram about art school. So let's get into it. What is your least favorite piece completed in art school? I'm going to have to say this one simply because I knew I could have done better on it. This is my final for a class. And even though I loved the concept and a lot of the execution was there, it was all about promoting diversity and inclusion and celebrating those who have gender non-conforming identities and in general just celebrating the LGBTQ plus community. And so I made these characters to be more androgynous. However, I'm super frustrated with this because I made each figure, even though it was supposed to be about diversity, have the same appendages and symbols that are typically associated with a cisgendered man and woman. And it would have been better if I had asserted my message through having a different mix of appendages on each figure to say that androgyny doesn't always look like this, that gender non-conforming doesn't always look like this, and also all the figures were able-bodied and had like limbs and I wish I just like, I wish I just had one figure that was clearly not able-bodied to just show and like communicate more diversity. That's what made it my least favorite piece. And my least favorite piece from another class was this. We're not talking about it. We're actually not talking about this one because it was about color interaction and color theory, which I have no understanding of, no grasp of. I've said this before in videos and people are like, no, like your color theory seems good with your paintings. Like, no sis, I know jack shit. I am just winging it and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And this is so evident of that. So we're gonna move past it. We're moving past it in the vault, but to not be a hypocrite, I think that I was successful in using scissors to cut out shapes. 
Moving on. How do you find inspiration for all your assignments? I'm having really bad artist block right now. I totally relate to this. I've been having like art block lately. I found the art block to work through it, you just have to be really disciplined. Set a timer of literally just five minutes to just draw shapes. Get get something down on paper. Because you'll find that even when you just draw random squiggles on a blank sheet of paper, you'll start to realize subconsciously after just doing random scribbles that you start liking certain compositions more. Like even if you just scribble in the corner of the page and you take a step back after five minutes and look at it, you'll be like, oh. Even though this is simply just a squiggle, I wish it was a bit more higher on the page. I wish it was a bit more to the left. And subconsciously, you start to think about artwork differently. So really just instilling that time in your day to just simply draw or just make things. I'm realizing too in art classes, there's like art and then there's drawing. So literally what you can do to also help build yourself as an artist is just to give yourself random ass tasks for five minutes. Maybe tear a piece of paper towel for five minutes and see how fine you can get it. Maybe get a plant outside and try to grow it in a mason jar. Maybe get an orange, peel it, and just look at the orange peel for five minutes and see what you see. Like there's so many ways to train your brain subconsciously for just doing, ran just doing random things that you don't have to make yourself feel bad for not drawing because that is an old school way of thinking about art and improving. If you want to improve in drawing, for sure, do that. But there's also other ways to improve at drawing other than getting a pencil to paper. You can literally train your brain to think in different ways and that itself will help you to draw and come up with concepts later. So literally just give yourself five minutes and just do random shit. You got this. I believe in you. What are the jobs that you can get after getting the degree? We're not answering that question. I'm getting anxiety. But thank you for participating. Breezy Arts asks, is it fun? I don't know, is it fun? Yeah, it's fun. There's a lot of highs, there's a lot of lows, and your highs are really high, and your lows are very low. Rock bottom low. Bedrock in Minecraft low. And that's coming from someone who has barely experienced art school, and I've had relatively good critiques so far, so I'm just only imagining how lower the lows can get from here on out because I am like a baby in the art world right now and I'm just waiting for the moment I'm climbing up a shelf and it falls on me and I die. Who is Brett? Where is Brett? Most importantly, how is Brett? I'm actually doing relatively good because all my classes are over and I'm feeling refreshed and I'm ready to do all my finals and pop off. Hopefully, we'll see. Do you still feel like you can enjoy the art since it's for a grade? This question actually hits hard for me because I spent 25 hours on this lily flower piece. I'll show it right here. And I was so proud of it. I spent so much time and emotion into it. My professor and TA liked it. They said they liked it during critique. And then I got the grade back and it was an A minus. And I literally started crying. Not to say again that I'm entitled to an A, not saying that, but I personally felt like I deserved the A. And obviously I respect their decisions. They're the professionals, but um, that really set me down a loop. And for the next project for the final, which is the one I showed previously that I didn't like that much, every time I was making a stitch or ripping the cardboard, I could just hear my professor's voice like in my head being like, that's shit, that's not good, why did you do that? It was all because of the grade. And so that to me made the process of creating it way less enjoyable. Um, and normally I wouldn't be so grade oriented, I wouldn't think about it that much, but because I'm applying to scholarships, I need a good GPA and I really need those scholarships and so I really just wanted like a perfect 4-0. Um, we'll see if that still happens, it's definitely a possibility, but it's just all like in my head, like I'm just stressed. So it has made it less enjoyable, but overall the experience has been really great and I'm very grateful for that. Also, my professor is actually so sweet. I'm just the one who's making up these scenarios in my head. Just wanted to clarify in case they see this because literally they saw my TikTok they found out my TikTok page. Who showed them? I don't know. The last question I'm gonna answer is a juicy one. How long is art class? Have you made any friends? Any art friends? You got a crush? Question mark, question mark. A lot of questions in this questions, so let's get into it. Art classes are usually two hours and 40 minutes at USC, which is pretty long, but I heard for like art art schools, they can get even longer, like three to four hours, which is absolutely insane. So I'm grateful for that. But also relative to my other classes for communications, like 
they're double. They're literally double the time. Have I made any friends? I feel like I definitely have a group of friends I can always text to hang out with or eat at the dining halls. Although I haven't branched out much from that group. And so I feel like I need to push myself to branch out a bit more. Um, if you saw my last video, it was very sad and dramatic. And I kind of talk about that a bit at the end, but yeah. Any art friends in particular? I do have a couple art friends. We went to a museum together, that was fun. We also ate at this random Italian restaurant that we did not think was gonna be good. We were actually trying to go to a pho place right next to it, but they were only doing takeout and we wanted to sit down. So we went to an Italian restaurant and first of all, they lit a candle on our dining table. Yup, it was romantic as fuck. We love that for platonic relationships. Last question for the entire video, you got a crush. I, in fact, do not have a crush. So juicy. With all that being said, y'all, that's the end of the video and the Q&A. I really hope this gave some insight to art school and helped you guys understand who I am as a person more. Because again, when I was applying to art schools, I watched these videos religiously. And so I wanted to pay it forward and make my own little video for the next group of art students to come in, which I'm so excited for all of you. Also, I think this can be like a tradition after every semester where I learn something new because there is so much more to learn. I'm literally a baby again. I am literally a baby. My energy in this video is kind of cray cray, but that was the video y'all. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, like the video. If you have a fun comment, critique, or joke to share, comment it down below. And if you want to follow me or my journey as an art student in LA, you can subscribe. And I think that's the end of the video y'all. Back to the video.